What up family, I'm back again with another recap. Now remember, if you missed the live stream, that's what this is all about. You get a short synopsis of what you missed, all right? Now in today's recap, we have a lady who is talking about, you know, a transition she made in her life for a Jamaican husband, you understand? And it was the biggest mistake she made, you know, based on what she is sharing in this clip right here she's talking about moving to korea because he wanted her to move there with him and all of that she quit her job and went there and you know a whole lot of things happened within that marriage so people take a listen to what was shared it cannot be me alone i cannot be the only one god made on stupid day now he's now he's all sweet he's he's all sweet when i tell you sweet He's all sweet. So eventually, I married him. Wait, so, wait, 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 mm -hmm. wait, wait, wait. You kind of hop over a bunch of things a while ago. Wait, you can't, what? You can't just hop over so much things, man. Eventually, on a day in the house. On a day in the house. No, man. You can't just hop over so much things. On a day in the house for a number of months. And then, bam, so they get married. Wait, the man. How did that come about? I mean... Oh, when I tell you that he kept asking me to marry him, he kept saying, you know, you know, he had never met anybody this kind and he just kept wooing and wooing and wooing. And when I kept holding out, he kept saying, you know, you are holding on to past hurt from past right. relationships. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, all right, him saying those things to you, right? How, mm -hmm. was, how, how, did, how, how did the first conversation of him even coming on to you even come about? Like, I mean, remember... Is somebody where you assist? I understand, as you say, you are just you and him in the house and all of that. And I understand that part. But how him even decide, say, I'm going to come at you with that kind of conversation in the first place? So after we went to pastor for this whole time that he wanted um, premarital counseling, wanted to talk to the pastor and stuff. And then eventually, eventually I said, you know what? If we're going to be in the house together, if he's... Being so persistent, he wants to take me to the pastor. I mean, who wants to take somebody to a pastor if you don't want, you know, to be married to them? He, he, you know, he seemed like he knew more about me than I was willing to tell him, which told me that he had been having a conversation with somebody who was close to me, who knew me and knew what I was about. And we all know who that was. Mm -hmm. So... You know, so when he was telling me all of this, you know, we, we went to the pastor and stuff and the pastor counseled us and he talked about all these things. And one of the first things the pastor asked was, who needed a green card? And that kind of struck me. And he was crying, I was like, oh, I have my visa. So I'm not asking her to marry me because I need a green card because I have my visa. My visa is valid. I can go home and come back anytime. So, you know. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, okay, you know, he did sound genuine. And everybody who's ever been in a relationship, you seek out the person who sounds genuine. And that's the person you say yes to. So even people are going to um, judge or say whatever. Everybody who's ever been in a relationship has been in that relationship because you trusted that person. Even if they, the, the trust fell apart later on, you trusted that person mm -hmm. for what they told you in the beginning. And that's what happened. But the marriage itself wasn't a big, it wasn't a problem to me, um, per se. Take in for a moment. So, all right. At that point, right? At that mm -hmm. point, when, when, when you go to the pastor, right? Um, were you actually into him relationship wise or you were still on edge about it or you was actually into him first? yes because I was still on edge about it I was not comfortable with it you know I I was looking at every, everything I was looking at everything like you are coming into this relationship with nothing I already I'm already established professionally you know I have kids you have one you know it's there were so many factors. What are you bringing to the relationship? You already owe me $3,700. And now you're asking me to marry you. Everything was just on the table. Everything was on the table. But he sort of dismissed everything. You know, he had a way of going around everything. 
And me, me being me, how I was then, because now nobody can play that mess with me anymore. Mm -hmm. But like how I was then, just uh, a people pleaser. You know, I I can't I can't see you hurt. I can't watch you hurt, knowing that I have contributed to it. Mm -hmm. So that's where we were at. So I said, you know what? If he's going to be this persistent and he seems genuine, I mean, why go into it with a heart full of, you know, doubt? Why not just go into it and then see what happens? So I went in with my whole heart. Okay, so now I got married, married to him. He's still going to school. He's going to school. I'm going to work. We are now we are starting to talk about the future, what we're going to do, how we're going to do this. You know, I am, I have to petition for him now to change his status. So I'm petitioning for him to change his status and he's going to school. Mark, you know, I left three kids back home. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I petitioned for the three kids and we're waiting for them to come. So he gets through just about the same time that the kids got through so the kids came in september in october the kids came in october of that year and he's going to school still i said you know something now that you have gotten a social security card i am no longer going to pay for you to go to the college to do this mortuary science because it's too darn expensive and i cannot afford it no money came from England. No money came from Jamaica. Every day I ask, it's another story. Then he's crying and he's saying, the grandfather let him down and the funeral people in Jamaica let him down. Everybody let him down. All of a sudden, I am the angel. I am the only angel that ever existed because everybody else in the world has let him down. And now all he has is me and all I have is you, baby. I've got nobody else in the world. Everybody I trusted let me down. Everybody I depended on let me down. I don't know if you all have ever encountered anybody like that. I've never before, and I hope never again. So I petitioned for him so that he could be able to work and to take care of himself. I mean, if you're going to marry the guy, why are you going to marry to him if you're not going to petition for him? What's the point? Okay. Petition for him and so you can help him to move on up, to help him to, you know, get a footing and fly. You don't want to marry him to hold him down. Mm -hmm. So... So I continued to pay the school fee, but I said, you know what? You can no longer go to that college. You going to just go to nursing school, just go to nursing school, do the 18 months and, you know, and then you'll be able to get you a job. So in the meantime, he started working, he started doing like dominoes, deliveries and stuff like that. I didn't have a problem with it because he was going to school in their time to study that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So he was doing that. And then he decided after he left nursing school, he graduated nursing school the following year, December. So after he graduated nursing school, that was my first sign that this is probably the worst thing I've ever done. Because when he was graduating, I'm so excited. You know, you're excited like you just send your kid to school. They did well. They're graduating. All that stuff. I'm prepared. Prepared for graduation. Mm -hmm. I see the manager not paying attention to me. And I said, I don't see a gown. I don't see a cap. What's going on? Aren't you going to graduation? He turned to me. He says, I don't know why you like those formal occasions. I don't like those formal occasions. Because I didn't even go to my own high school graduation. So I'm not going. I said, what? What do you mean you're not going to the graduation? He said, in fact, I'm going to Jamaica. Can you drop me to the airport? And I sure did drop him to the airport and he went to Jamaica. Never went to the graduation. So when he came back, we had to have a conversation because I was like, you know, that is just like, you know, and he starts crying. Oh, now you're going to make, because I didn't go to a graduation, you're going to make that destroy your marriage. Really? Something that simple, something that's not even really a graduation. You're going to make that destroy a marriage. So I found myself like abandoning my feelings so I can accommodate 
whatever he is saying because he is always saying oh you're not going to do that to destroy our marriage oh you're not going to do that to destroy our marriage oh you can't you can't you can't do that because everything to him is going to destroy the marriage so it seemed to me as though he wanted to preserve the marriage and it, it making it seem as though i am saying stuff or i am doing stuff or my feelings that i'm expressing is going to destroy the marriage mm -hmm. so most of the times i would usually just back off just abandon my feelings and just leave it alone so it doesn't cause an argument but after he graduated school he got a job he got his first nursing job he went from making two dollars and fifty cents at dominoes to making twenty dollars and fifty cents so i said well now you gotta pay me back the money that i used to send you to school and i don't think i was being unfair because if you say your cousins abandon you your family members abandon you grandfather abandon you the person who was supposed to send the money from jamaica abandon you everybody abandon you and now i send you to school and everything now you're working you you can pay me back which so, is only fair. so which is only fair mm -hmm. and oh my god he bought and he carry on and he said you know you and i are going to be together forever why you would do you think if i did something for you i would charge you i wouldn't if it was you do you think i would want the money back you know i would see it as an investment in the marriage and he just went on and on and on and on and listen I cannot put my finger on anything that I can say, well, he deliberately did this mm -hmm. for the marriage. But every time, you know, he did little things, you know, buy groceries, you know, little, yeah, little see, stuff. Yeah, because I'm living but at the house, so, I mean. Normal, yeah, right. right. I, had, I handed over, I handed over, like, the light, the phone, the water, the cable, that sort of thing in his name because i wanted him to build his credit so he had those bills and i had the mortgage i paid the mortgage because i had to get a house for the kids so i i got the house and and so i figured i paid the mortgage you pay the light you pay the phone you pay the water you pay the cable and you know he's still getting himself on his feet so soon after that he wanted to join the military so this is where my whole story gets <laughs> very interesting, I would say. He wanted to join the military, but what I didn't know at the time, I didn't know that when you join the military with only a green card, they fa fast track your citizenship. I didn't know that. Uh, so when he said he wanted to join the military, I was pissed because I was like, to me, the military spells abandonment. It says to me that you are ready to leave this marriage. You're ready to abandon me and go away and I never see you again. Mm -hmm. So he convinced me that that was not the case and stuff. He liked the rough and tumble and, you know, he didn't feel comfortable being a nurse as a man. And he just wanted a new experience. Little did I know he went into the military less than a year after he joined the military was a citizen. Oh. As soon as he signed that paper, he filled out that paperwork for that citizenship. So that meant that now that he has his citizenship through the military, he don't need to stay with me to get the citizenship anymore. Right. So no, so, so no need to fight for the marriage no more. Exactly. So I'm, I'm but I'm still in the dark. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But he's trying to convince me that you know he's, he he wants the marriage and all that, even though I kept you know finding evidence of him being unfaithful. And stuff like that but every time i find something it's always my fault mm. it's always i didn't you didn't see me with anybody all you're doing is speculating and uh, you know all that you know the, you know how they can manipulate your thoughts and try to tell you that what you are thinking is not you're paranoid that sort of thing so most time i just leave things because i don't like to have a fight but we never had like word throwing or hitting we never have anything like that mm -hmm. We just have disagreements. Right. And so he went, he went to the military and they had sent him off to Korea. He said, oh, he's going to Korea by himself. And then he'll see how situations are. And then if anything, he'll send for me. I said, all right, no problem. He went over there. Came, he didn't come back. He 
calls me and he said, you know, he can't stay over there by himself. He need his wife over there. He can't stay by himself. So I left my job, picked up myself, got on a plane, went to Korea, stayed in Korea with him for that year and came back and six more months. So that was 18 months I didn't work. I was over there in Korea until we came back stateside. When we came back stateside, he started hunt, he started house hunting because he wanted to buy a house. Because now he is a veteran. Now he's in the military. He has the VA, the VA no down payment loan. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to use that to get a house. Which I'm excited because, of course, yes, we need a house. Lo and behold, he bought the house. And three months, you hear me tell you, three months after he bought the house, he called the police and told them that I had threatened him. That I had threatened him. So now my name is in the police black book. The police interrogated me like just, and I'm confused. And I'm like, did he really do that? So, so listen to what led to it. So he says to me, I'm going to go to Georgia because I have a cousin who is trying to break it into the reggae music business. He's having a promotional showdown in Georgia and I'm going down there to support him. I'm all for it. I say, okay, go for it. No problem. When are you coming back? He's going to work on Thursday. When he leaves work on Thursday, he's going down to Georgia. And he's not coming back until Monday evening. I say, uh-uh, something is wrong there. No promotional show you're going to go from Thursday till Monday. Mm -hmm. He said I was being paranoid and I was fussing about nothing. He was going just to support his cousin and then he will be back. I say, fine, no problem. So when he called me that Thursday night and told me he was at his destination, I started to do some homework. So I got on my computer and I started searching and I found that his phone was in Alabama. Okay, so I searched and searched some more and I found the name of the woman he's with, the address, the phone number, the whole 10 yards. Mm -hmm. So now I know the jig is up. So he called me all day Friday, I didn't answer. He called me all day Saturday, I don't answer. All day Sunday, I don't answer. All day Monday, I don't answer. Monday evening, he comes in through the door. He comes in and he says, oh my God, you're so wicked. Imagine I could have been dead on the side of the road. I've been calling you, calling you. You never pick up the phone. Acting so wounded. And because I know what I know and he don't know what I know, I don't need to say a word. So he kept acting, he kept acting and I just ignore him. I don't pay him no attention. A couple of days would pass and he comes back with this thing. Trev, you know that my cousin's going to be a big star. I said the show was the bomb. The show was, I don't answer. I don't pay no attention. I left it alone. That Saturday, he comes back telling me the same story and said I wasn't supportive and I didn't like his family and I was showing my true colors and all of this nonsense. So I said, I don't want to hear anything from you about you nor your cousin, where you were, what you were doing. I don't want to hear. So he gets mad. He picks up the vacuum, throws it in the wall, jumps in his car, storms off. So, okay. The next thing I know, I'm sitting in the kitchen. I hear somebody say, anybody home? It's the police. Well, there you have it, family. We reached the end. If you want to hear the rest of what happened in this story, go on over to Unstoppable Live. The link for this video will be in the description. Just click it and it will take you there. And you just watch the thing from the beginning to the end. Listen so that you get a perfect understanding of exactly everything that was shared. Believe me, it's a very interesting one. All right. When you go over, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the subscribe button right here as well. Zane, bless up. I'm out. Unstoppable.